Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next installment in our webinar series. As you all know, my name is Jerry Nadu, and I am the IT tutor at IT Online Learning. So in this lesson, we're going to examine some of the basic Windows printing concepts. So by taking an end-to-end -end tour of the printing process. So we won't go into great detail about this, but I just want to give you an overview of the printing process. So this session will be very, very short, as we're also going to talk about the different printer types. So let's begin with the printing process. Imagine you want to copy of a report you wrote using Microsoft Word. So when you send a print command from Word, you've effectively started a print job that's picked up by the print spooler. So a print job could be one page or several pages. So the print spooler manages all of the print jobs and acts as a primary component in the Windows printing architecture. So the spooler is just a Windows service that runs the moment your PC starts up and boots your desktop. So when Windows says your print job is spooling, it means that your job is being processed. So in fact, apart from the, the print queue, you cannot actually see the printing process, but it is occurring in the background. The image in front of you right now shows you all of the printed drivers installed on this PC, but we can only use the driver that applies to the printer we are using. So once the spooler takes control, it then locates your print driver. So the print driver is an important program that helps your applications, like Word, talk to your printer. So it's a language translator that converts print data into a language format your printer can understand. So this is necessary because different printers use different printer languages. So perhaps your printer could use PostScript or PCL or maybe another language. So it's important to have the right driver installed for your operating system and model. So it's also important to, to keep your printer driver up to date because printer manufacturers are always fixing bugs uh, or issues. So you could run a Windows update just to help detect for new drivers. Or alternatively, you could visit the manufacturer's website. The choice is purely yours. A rendering module in your print driver converts graphics and print settings, like special characters, spacings, or margins, so your report prints correctly. So a configuration module also communicates information about the printer, like paper supply or ink level. So after the print driver finishes converting the print data, the print spooler resumes control of your print job to continue its work. Soon, the spooler reaches out to find your printer. If it's ready, the spooler sends out the job. And at this point, the job has finished spooling and your report's journey is finished when it's printed. But if your printer isn't ready because it's turned off, printing other jobs or out of ink, the spooler holds the job in a print queue. So the queue is a first come, first serve list of local print jobs that are temporarily stored on your hard drive. So you can check your printer's queue to see which jobs are waiting to be printed. Once your printer is ready, Spooler sends out the job and your report is printed. The journey is now complete. So also after unboxing your printer, be sure to place it on the clean flat surface near your computer and uh, well, also a power outlet. So if you're considering sharing your printer on a network, you might want to place it in a centralized location. So when you configure your print device, you'll have various settings to customize, like your port or your IP address, depending on whether it's local or for a network. So the great thing about newer devices is that they're easy to set up because of their plug and play capabilities. So this means that when you connect your printer to your computer using a USB cable, Windows automatically tries to install the right drivers so you can print right away. So if plug and play fails, you should manually install the right print driver. After you have your printer is set up and configured in Windows, print a test page to verify that it's working. So if it fails, you could have a connection problem or a print driver problem that you'll need to figure out. And well, that's it for the session. So there really isn't too much uh, to it regarding the printing process, but I did just want to uh, make you all aware of what it's about. And now the next session will be fairly lengthy as we'll be discussing the, um, the different printer types. But before we get into that, as usual, it's time for a quiz. Now let's talk about the, the different printer types. So we're going to look at laser printers, thermal printers, and impact printers. So let's begin with impact printers. 
So impact printers were introduced in the 1970s and 80s and are still in active production with newer models being released. So at one time, they were very widely used. And in this lesson, we'll learn about these different impact printers and why we still see them around today. So impact printers work by physically striking the print head to the print surface, much like your old fashioned typewriter. So an ink ribbon is placed between the print head and the surface, and then an ink impression is left behind. So that's the reason um, these printers are so noisy. So the best known impact printer is the dot matrix. So a lot of times we'll simply say dot matrix when we're actually referring to impact printing. So dot matrix printers became popular because they're inexpensive and can print text and limited graphics. So dots are printed when a hammer strikes the matrix printhead with the pin grid. So different characters and symbols can be printed using various pin combinations and printing one grid row at a time. So the electric impulses define which pin to strike. So dot matrix printed can have 9 to 48 pins for a print quality ranging from 100 to 400 dots per inch. Now let's move on to thermal printers. Now you may not realize it, but you've probably already had experience with thermal printing. So if you ever got the sales receipt from a grocery store and noticed that it had black streaks on it when you took it out of your pocket, you already know something about thermal printing. So while the average home office will probably never have a thermal printer, you might see them in a business or an industrial environment um, as a PC technician. So you should know about the different thermal printing solutions. So a thermal printer is very quiet and it's easy to use and maintain. So let's take a closer look. So a thermal printer uses heat to make a print. So the print head does not move. It's made of rows of many tiny pins that are like miniature heating elements. So characters and other designs are printed when the different pins are turned on or off and touch the paper. So the technology is simple. The feed assembly is a rubber roller or platen, like the one shown here, uh, that grabs the paper and passes it through a printer. So a spring device, also shown here, applies pressure to the paper so that it always touches the print head as it passes through. Since they have few moving parts, these printers last a long time and require little maintenance. So let's look at two different methods used for, um, well, for using heated pins to produce a printout. So one method is a short-term solution. It's not good for archiving documents. It's called direct thermal printing. And it doesn't use ink, toner, or a ribbon, but prints directly on special paper. So this special paper, called thermal paper, has a thermochromic coating that it makes uh, that makes it sensitive to heat. So while it might look like the pins burn images into the thermal paper, it's actually the thermal coating that simply darkens to gray or black whenever it's touched by uh, by hot pins. So we see the solution most often used for receipts in cash registers, ATMs, uh, fax machines, and even handheld calculators. So direct thermal printers also work well for quick printouts of barcode tags, shipping labels, and concert tickets. So they're found all over the place since they're small, inexpensive, and fast. So at top speeds, they can print up to 30 centimeters um, of a receipt in one second. So on the other hand, thermal transfer printing can provide a long lasting solution with durability of 10 years or more, even outdoors. So thermal transfer printers use heated pins to transfer solid ink from a ribbon. So the ink is melted onto stock material such as vinyl, polyester, nylon, or flexible magnets. So the printers are often, uh, often used for workplace safety announcements uh, or inventory labels. So what used to be called wax transfer printing is now called thermal transfer printing because a wax resin composite is used instead of just wax. So ribbons are available in limited colors to give you a detailed design. So this transfer technology produces the most durable printed materials when, uh, when av uh, well, materials available when stock, uh, when stock material uh, and solid ink types are carefully matched. So the archival quality prints can withstand extreme temperatures, ultraviolet exposures, chemicals, sterilization, and more. So this means they're very versatile 
can be used uh, outdoors in the sun, cold, or rain. So they can provide a long-term solution to, let's say, permanently inventory uh, items. So next, we're going to talk about laser printers and the laser printing process. So as a PC technician, you will support laser printers because they're very widely implemented. They create very high quality prints, they're fast, and they're more economical to use. So with that in mind, let's talk about how laser printers work. So laser printers are fairly complex. They use lasers in the process of melting and cooling plastic in order to produce high quality image, well, a high quality image. So let's, let's take a look at the different components that make up a laser printer. So the major components of a laser printer, well, besides the, um, the electronic circuits, uh, include the laser unit, drum unit, charging corona wire, the toner hopper, and the fuser unit. So when we print something, an electronic unit in the laser printer receives the digital data from a computer and figures out how it should look like on paper. So it then directs a laser beam through a reflecting mirror to scan back and forth across the drum unit while it rotates, building up a pattern of charges. So the drum, which continues to rotate, then picks up a kind of powdered ink called toner and presses the pattern onto the paper. Finally, a fuser unit bonds the toner to the paper by heating it up. So let's take a closer look at some of the uh, at some of these components. So during printing, the drum rotates step by step while a charge corona wire on top induces uh, charges on the drum surface. So this is done by a large voltage applied to the charge corona wire. Or well, some printers use um, use a charge roller instead of a corona wire to apply charges to the drum surface. But in essence, the principle is still the same. So following this, a focused laser beam shines on the surface back and forth, directed by a mirror. So note that during a scanning note that during a scanning line, the laser turns on and off as controlled by the electronic units. So when the laser is on, it discharges the point where it shines on. So after one scanning line, the drum rotates one step and the process repeats. So in this way, the laser draws the letters and images to be printed as a pattern uh, or lack of electrical charges on the drum surface. So next to the laser unit is the toner hopper, which contains the positively charged toner, or fine, which is also fine black powder. Since it's charged with the same type of uh, charges as the drum surface, the toner clings to the discharge areas of the drum, but not to the charged background. So this is somewhat like um, writing on a soda can. So, uh, well, writing on a soda can with glue, uh, rather, and then rolling it over some flour. So the flour only sticks to the glue-coated part of the can, so you end up with a message written in flour. So as the drum continues to rotate, it presses onto the sheet of paper which has been charged with the opposite types of uh, charges, positive, by a transfer corona wire. Since opposite charges attract each other, the paper can pull the toner powder off uh, the drum surface. So the, mo so the moving of the paper and the revolving of the drum are synchronized, so it picks up the image pattern exactly. So to keep the paper from clinging to the drum, it's discharged by the corona wire immediately after picking up the toner. So moving on to the laser unit. So the traditional laser scanning assembly includes one, a laser, two, a movable mirror, and three, a lens. So the laser's control unit receives the page data, which is the tiny dots that make up the text and images, one horizontal line at a time. So the laser beam scans across the drum, the laser turns on for every dot to be printed and off for every dot of empty space. So instead of moving the laser beam itself, the scanning is actually achieved by moving a mirror that reflects the laser beam. So a series of lenses are also used to compensate for the image distortion caused by the varying distance between the mirror and points along the drum surface. The laser assembly then moves, hori well, moves horizontally only. After each line of scan, the printer moves the photoreceptor drum or the, the drum unit up a notch so the laser assembly can draw the next line. 
a small print engine computer synchronizes all of this perfectly, even at high speeds. So toner in the laser printer plays the same role um, as ink in an, uh, in an inkjet printer. However, it's more than just the ink. So the powder has two main ingredients, which is one being pigment and the other being plastic. And the toner has to be chargeable. So the pigment provides the color that produces the letters and images on paper. So black and white paper, black pigment is used. The pigment is then blended with uh, plastic particles, which melt when heated up by the fuser and bind the pigment with the paper firmly. This means that laser printers can print on any kind of paper and the text won't smudge or bleed easily like that of any kind of uh, inkjet printer. Finally, the printer passes the paper to the fuser, a pair of heater with a pair of heated rollers, during which the loose toner powder melts and fuses the fibers in the paper. The fuser rolls uh, the fuser rolls the paper to the output tray, and you have your finished page. So the fuser also heats up the paper itself, of course, which is why uh, pages are always hot when they come out of the printer. So, what keeps the paper from burning up? Well, mainly its speed. The paper passes through the roller so quickly that it doesn't get that it doesn't get very hot. And that's it for today's lesson. So there, as you can see, there are many different types of printers on the market. There are laser, dot matrix printers, um, inkjet printers, there are 3D printers, thermal printers, etc., etc. So today I want to discuss a few printer types as well as the printing process. And as always, yet again, we have another we have another quiz for you to um, for you to answer. And be sure to follow us on our socials and comments uh, on our videos just to let us know what other topics um, you want us to cover in future webinars. And thank you all for watching uh, today's webinar and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.